माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जान वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जान वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा वनचारी यमुना तीरा वनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जान वल्लभ गिरिवर दारी यशोदानंदन व्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा वनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे जय राधा गोपीनाथ राधा गोपीनाथ राधे जय जय प्रभु पा प्रभु पा प्रभु पा जय जय प्रभु पा नित गौरारी बो हरी बो हरिबो नित गौर हरिबो
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टू चैप्टर सेवन एंटाइटल्ड स्केड्यूल्ड इनकार्नेशन वर्स नंबर फिफ्टीन अंत सरस उलेन पदे गृही तो अंत सरस उलेन पदे गृही तो ग्राहे न यूतपतिर्ंबुज हस्त अर्थ ग्राहे न यूतपतिर्ंबुज हस्त अर्थ आहेद आदिपुरशाखिलोकनाथ आहेद आदिपुरुष अखिल लोकनाथ तीर्थ श्रव श्रवण मंगल नाम देह तीर्थ श्रव श्रवण मंगल नाम देह अंत सरस उलेन पदे गृही तो ग्राहे न यूतपतिरंबुज अस्त अर्थ आहेद आदिपुरशाखिलोकनाथ तीर्थ श्रव श्रवण मंगल नाम देय
अंत सरसी विदिन द रिवर उरू बलेना बाय सुपीरियर स्ट्रेंथ पदे लेग गृही तहा बीइंग टेकन अप ग्राहेना बाय द क्रॉकोडाइल यूतपति ही ऑफ द लीडर ऑफ द एलिफेंट्स अंबुजहस्ता with a lotus flower in the hand artaha greatly aggrieved aha addressed idam like this adi purusha the original enjoyer akhila lokanatha the lord of the universe tirtha shravaha as famous as a place of pilgrimage shravana mangala all good simply by hearing the name namadeya whose holy name is worth chanting translation the leader of the elephants whose leg was attacked in a river by a crocodile of superior strength was much aggrieved taking a lotus flower in his trunk he addressed the lord saying o original enjoyer lord of the universe o deliverer as famous as a place of pilgrimage all are purified simply by hearing your holy name which is worthy to be chanted purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupad The history of delivering the leader of elephants whose leg was attacked in the river by the superior strength of a crocodile is described in the 8th canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. Since the Lord is absolute knowledge, there is no difference between his holy name and the personality of Godhead. The leader of elephants was much distressed when he was attacked by the crocodile. Although the elephant is always stronger than the crocodile, the the latter is stronger than the elephant when it is in the water. and because the elephant was a great devotee of the lord in his previous birth he was able to chant the holy name of the lord by dint of his past good deeds every living entity is always distressed in this material world because this place is such that at every step one has to meet with some kind of distress but one who is supported by his past good deeds engages himself in the devotional service of the lord as confirmed in the bhagavad gita 7.16 those who are supported by the impious acts cannot be engaged in devotional service of the lord even though they are distressed this is also confirmed in bhagavad gita 7.15 the personality of god hari appeared at once on the back of his eternal bearer garuda and delivered the elephant the elephant was conscious of his relationship with the with the supreme lord he addressed the lord as adi purusha or the original enjoyer both the lord and the living entity are conscious and are therefore enjoyers but the lord is the original enjoyer because he is a creator of everything in a family both the father and sons are undoubtedly enjoyers but the father is the original enjoyer and the son sons are subsequent enjoyers a pure devotee knows well that everything in the universe is a property of the lord and that a living entity can enjoy a thing as ordained by the lord a living being cannot even touch a thing which is not allotted to him this idea of the original enjoyer is explained very nicely in the ishopanishad one who knows this difference between the lord and himself never accepts anything without first offering it to the lord the elephant addressed the lord as akhila lokanatha or the lord of the universe who is therefore the lord of the elephants also the elephant being a pure devotee of the lord specifically deserved to be saved from the attack of the crocodile and because it is a promise of the lord that his devotee will never be vanquished it was quite befitting that the elephant called upon the lord for his protection and the merciful lord also also at once responded the lord is a protector of everyone but he is first the protector of one who acknowledges the superiority of the lord instead of being so falsely proud as to deny the superiority of the lord and to claim to be his uh, to be equal to him he is ever superior a pure devotee of the lord knows this difference between the lord and himself therefore a pure devotee is given first preference because of his full dependence 
whereas the person who denies the existence of the Lord and declares himself the Lord is called Asura, and as such, he is given protection by the strength of limited power, subject to the to, to the sanction of the Lord. Since the Lord is superior to everyone, his protection is also superior. No one can imagine it. <clears throat> Om Ajnanti Mirandasya Gyanajana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam One day Ham Shri Guru Shri Utaha Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnamamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानो शुते देवी प्रणमामी हरि प्रिय वंच कल्पतरु व्यस्च कृपा सिंधु व्ययेवचा पतितानाम पावने ब्यो वैष्णवे ब्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्या प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैता गदाधार श्रीवासादिगार बक्तव्रंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo Rama Ramo Hare Hare <coughs> Hare Krishna <coughs> I'd like to welcome all of you all to the Srimad Bhagavatam class <coughs> So today we are discussing um, a section of Srimad Bhagavatam where Gajendra, the very famous elephant king, has taken shelter of the Lord. And this section of um, the purport of this particular verse, Srila Prabhupada is speaking about something very, very important, the aspect of taking shelter of the holy names of the Lord. <coughs> the holy names of the Lord are so merciful that they grant us more than what the Supreme Personality of Lord Himself is able to grant us. So the incarnation of the Holy Name of the Lord is considered to be very, very merciful and very, very um, magnanimous. So today we are on the eve of Gaur Purnima, just approaching a few days. So I thought um, in a what better verse and what a, what better theme to speak on than on uh, the most magnanimous avatar of the Lord who has given us the holy name. <clears throat> so today <clears throat> I'm going to go very deep into uh, Gaur Leela and um, I've been reading a book of Gaur Govind Maharaj uh, called Embankment of uh, Separation. Um, it's one of the deepest books I have ever read on uh, Mahaprabhu's pastimes and the depth of what I read, I felt I have to share it, you know. I, I just couldn't contain it within me. It has to be, it has to come out to the world and devotees must uh, know this. So I'm trying to make a little attempt on uh, presenting Gaur Leela from a very, very esoteric and a very, very deep aspect. It will actually help us prepare our consciousness for uh, uh, welcoming Mahaprabhu into our lives, welcoming Gaur Purnima very soon. So, we all know that there are two causes 
of the appearance of Lord Chaitanya in this world, there is an external cause and there is an internal cause. The external cause, of course, is to spread love of God through the Harinam Sankirtan. <clears throat> Kali Yuge Dharma Hoye Hari Sankirtana Etat Arte Avartina um, Sachinandana. So the Lord appeared in this world to spread Harinam Sankirtan. So Gauranga Mahaprabhu is considered to be the father of Hari Sankirtan. And something that is very, very difficult for even Lord Brahma to obtain, Lord Chaitanya is giving it indiscriminately. Not seeing qualification, not seeing your, uh, you know, your pious deeds, he's just giving it to everyone. And therefore, <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya is called a very, he's given a very interesting name. So one of the names of Lord Chaitanya, he is known as Prema Purushottam. That means the personality who gives Krishna Prem. So when Krishna came 5000 years back, um, he gave Bhagavad Gita to the world. He gave Bhagavad Gita to Arjun and through Arjun he gave it to the world. And in that, in the Gita, Krishna speaks about three types of knowledge. Confidential knowledge, more confidential knowledge and most confidential knowledge. Guhya, Guhyatara, and Guhyatama. So confidential knowledge is in the second and third chapter of Gita, where Krishna is giving, giving us the difference between the body and the soul. If you actually see, why is this called confidential knowledge? The reason is because most people in this world don't know this also, isn't it? This is supposed to be the basics of Bhagavad Gita, but because it is not so well known to people, it is called confidential knowledge. So anyone who turns the Bhagavad Gita and literally reads the first 10 or 12 verses of the Bhagavad Gita will get access to this confidential knowledge. So, of course, in a world that is um, image obsessed based on the body, that means whatever we do is for the body. We spend so much for decorating the body. We spend so much on beautifying the body. So, in, in such a context, this is considered to be a confidential knowledge. More confidential knowledge is revealed by Krishna in the 7th and 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where Krishna speaks about how the soul comes from the super soul and how our duty is to serve him. But Raj Guhiyam, the most confidential knowledge, is uh, about loving God. So, love of God, which is simply bhakti, is considered to be the most confidential knowledge, where Krishna speaks about man manabhav mad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru. And then he concludes the whole Gita by saying sarvadharman paritajya maam ekam sharanam braja. So when Krishna winds up his pastimes in this world, he goes back, but he's thinking, I have given people in this world confidential, more confidential and most confidential knowledge, but what I have given people in this world is so theoretical. How will people ever understand and apply it in their lives? So Krishna said, I have not taught people Sharanagati Tattva in practical. Just like in colleges we have a theory class and then we have a practical class. Krishna in Krishna Leela did the theory class completely. First class teacher he was. He taught theory very nicely. But he was wondering, what is the point in teaching only theory when I am not given practical knowledge of application of the theory? And therefore, he decided, I have to go and practically demonstrate in this world what it means to surrender. And that is considered to be the um, external reason uh, for why Lord Chaitanya comes into this world. So, but there is an internal reason why Lord Chaitanya comes into this world. Sarup Damodar Goswami, he um, is quoted by Rupa Goswami in the Lalita Madhav, where Rupa Goswami is mentioning quoting Swarup Damodar Goswami about the three internal reasons or the three reasons why Krishna comes into this world for a personal. So externally he came to teach the world Sharanagati or how to surrender, how to do bhakti practically. But internally he has a reason why he came into this world. So he, the first thing Krishna wanted to know was what is Radharani's love? The second thing he wanted to know was what is Rupa Madhuri? That means my beauty, which Radharani relishes so much, how can I relish that beauty? And the third reason he comes in this world is, 
what happiness that does radharani get in serving me and i want to experience that pleasure which she gets in serving me and in seeing my beauty so these are the three desires which are called as three types of greed for which the lord comes into this world so this word lobha or greed is considered to be a not exactly a good word right somebody who is a lobha filled with greed is considered to be a bad person but swarup damodar goswami in this context uses the word lobha for the lord everything in this world comes from the lord only so if there is greed in this world that greed also comes from god only and because god has some greed therefore all of us have some greed but the only difference is that the greed of god is for the welfare of the world and the greed of us is for our own welfare so material greed is considered to be very bad so materialistic people don't know how to use greed in fact they abuse it by directing towards material enjoyment and therefore when we speak about lord chaitanya's greed when we speak about lord krishna's greed we are not talking about this type of greed we are talking about a different type of greed for which the lord comes into this world it is explained that um the the supreme lord the seed of desire uh, for being greedy it begins in different incarnations of the lord and it becomes highest in lord chaitanya that means every every incarnation of the lord that comes into this world comes to fulfill one type of greed but as the progression of the incarnations continues the greed is the highest in lord chaitanya so lord vishnu it begins there lord vishnu in the vaikuntha planets he started developing some greed what was the greed that he had now vishnu is lakshmi pati right he has everything why does he need to become greedy somebody who is the richest man in this world doesn't have the money of all the other people so naturally he wants to take that also right but the lord who has a richness of everyone in this world why he is he greedy so lord has everything but somewhere at some point he felt i have so much strength i have so much bala but what is the point in having so much bala when i can't use it to fight with anybody so he started developing greed of fighting with someone to use that bala so when uh, he developed the greed that he wants to fight with someone the yoga maya the internal potency of the lord decided to arrange facilitate a good fight for the lord and therefore uh, these jay vijay were cursed to go to the material world they became hiranyaksha hiranyakashipu they became you know shishupal and vakra and they became ravan kumbhakarna and this greed of the lord to have a good fight was satisfied see if the lord has to have a good fight also he needs a good opponent if the opponent is going to very quickly get defeated there is no point there is no fun so who can be a better opponent to the lord than the devotee of the lord so the devotee of the lord is empowered to fight with the lord to satisfy this greed of the lord then comes the greed of narsingh dev so narsingh dev has two types of forms one is a ugra form very fearsome form and then there is a anugraha form which is a very loving and compassionate form so after killing narsingh dev uh, sorry after killing hiranyakashipu narsingh dev adopted a ugra form extremely fearsome and all the gods were very very scared of him and narsingh dev was you know literally doing tandav rudra tandav and going to annihilate the whole universe so all the gods pushed prahlad maharaj saying that please calm him down so prahlad maharaj such a dear devotee of the lord comes and offers prayers to the lord and narsingh dev immediately becomes calm and peaceful you know usually no matter how angry or no matter how violent you are as a person no matter how you know insensitive you are as a person when a small child comes in front of you a small puppy a small kitten anything that is tiny comes in front of you there is a little compassion that comes out from the heart so narsingh dev became a little calm and he put prahlad maharaj on his lap and he began to lick prahlad maharaj and as narsingh dev was licking prahlad maharaj he observed something very interesting he observed that prallad was experiencing a certain type of happiness which was something narsingh dev could not imagine only why is he so happy 
he felt that Prahlad is enjoying Vatsalya Bhav that I have never enjoyed. Narasingh Dev came out from pillar. Nobody is there to love him, right? No father, no mother. He said, he developed the greed that I want to enjoy this rasa that Prahlad is enjoying. So Narasingh Dev developed the greed for Vatsalya Prem. And from that incarnation onwards, all the other incarnations of the Lord always have a father and mother who love him. And then eventually the Lord appears as Lord Ram. Lord Ram develops a certain type of greed. Vibhishan and Sugriv, they are friends of Lord Ram. That means there is Sakyaras here. But there are two types of Sakya. There is a Sakya known as Sambrahma Sakya. And then is, there is another Sakya known as Vishrambha Sakya. Sambrahma Sakya means Sakya that is filled with awe and reverence. You will never find Sugriv sitting on Ram's shoulders. You will never find Vibhishan, you know, slapping the back of Ram. You will never find, you know, Sugriv and Vibhishan doing any kind of mischief with Lord Ram. Even if their leg by mistake touches Lord Ram, they feel so guilty. So Ram was bored of this kind of friendship, you know. He wanted to experience Vishrambha Sakya, which is friendship that was different, without this awe and reverence stuff. And Ram developed greed for that kind of friendship. And therefore, Lord Ram, when he comes eventually as Krishna, he has friends who don't care for him. He has friends who don't think of him as God at all. He has friends who don't worship him at all. In fact, they challenge him at every point. So, um, and then Ram also developed another type of greed where he experienced uh, Madhuryaras with Mother Sita. But all the experience of Madhurya that Ram had with Sita was very formal, formal conjugal rush because this is a husband-wife relationship. And they didn't get a chance to date. They didn't get a chance to experience all the adventures that lovers experience, you know. The separation also that they experience, um, Vipralamba Bhav, Sambhoga, they experience quite a bit, but they also experience Vipralamba. The Vipralamba that Ram and Sita experienced was also of only one particular variety. There was no variety in the Vipralamba also. There was no variety in the separation. So Ram developed a greed for having variety in separation. So Rupa Goswami talks about different types of viraha. Different types of separation. So he says in the Ujwal Nilamani, he speaks about Purva Raga Viraha, Mana Viraha, Prema Vaichitya Viraha. There is also another Viraha known as Pravas Viraha. So like this, there are different types of Viraha. Pravas Viraha means when the lover goes away, you know, travels for some distance. And then there is separation. That's called Pravas Viraha. Mana Viraha means when the lovers have fight with each other. There is a separation, you know, for a certain duration time. That's called Man Viraha. So like this, Ram was thinking how boring it is to have only one type of Viraha. I want to experience... So he developed the greed for having different types of Viraha. And therefore, when the Lord comes as Lord Krishna in Vrindavan, there is the separation between Radha and Krishna is so much variety in that separation. They experience every single type of Viraha. And this was the greed that uh, the Lord uh, experienced in, um, uh, in uh, Krishna Leela. So, in this way, the greed of the Lord caused one incarnation of the, of the Lord to descend after another. So now Krishna, he has everything that all other incarnations were missing. You know, so Krishna's greed was satisfied to a great extent in this incarnation. But even as Krishna, he had three types of greed left. So he, so like every incarnation we see, they're developing a different type of greed, you know, it's going deeper and deeper and deeper. Krishna Leela, the greed is the deepest. The three greeds that Krishna, Krishna had was, first greed was, what is the love of Radharani and how can I relish that love? The second greed that Krishna had was, what is my beauty, my excellence in beauty and how can I relish my own beauty? And the third greed that he had was, what happiness that Radha get by relishing my beauty? How can I have that happiness? So Krishna wanted, became greedy for this. And the desire to fulfill these type, these three greeds that Krishna had, 
it remained unfulfilled in the past times of Krishna in his entire life. And therefore, Krishna appeared as Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to fulfill these three types of greeds. And therefore, the succession of these incarnations, each incarnation going deeper and deeper and deeper, is to fulfill the different types of greeds of the Lord. And finally, it came to the point of Krishna coming as Lord Chaitanya to fulfill this greed. And how Krishna comes as, decides to come as Lord Chaitanya, there is a beautiful story behind that. <clears throat> One time, um, Shibata Radharani was waiting for Krishna in her kunj in Vrindavan. And her Ashta Sakis, the eight prominent Sakis, they had created a very beautiful kunj for the pleasure of the Lord, Radha and Krishna's union. And they used all kinds of forest flowers, they used all kinds of trees, all kinds of leaves, and all kinds of beautiful decorative items to, to make the kunja of Radha and Krishna extremely comfortable. Peacocks were dancing outside, cuckoos were, were creating beautiful melodious sounds, Radha had cooked some very special offering for the pleasure of the Lord. There was a beautiful bed created out of leaves and flowers. And on that bed, Radharani had spread camphor, expecting Krishna to come and be with her. But as she was waiting for Krishna to come, Krishna was not coming only. And Radha's um, expectation of union was increasing more and more and more. And she was experiencing separation from Krishna, but Krishna is not coming only. Every time there would be a little rustling of the leaves, Radha would run out to see if it is Krishna who has come. And no matter how much she kept waiting and waiting and waiting, Krishna just didn't come. So as she kept waiting, so she started feeling a, a, a very intense type of separation from Krishna. And <clears throat> in her intense separation, it is explained that there is something known as leftist mindset. So Radharani's leftist mindset started increasing, you know. Um, in this world, whatever is the lowest is the highest in the material in the spiritual world, right? So highest in the spiritual world is leftist. The lowest in the material world is obviously you can conclude. So um, this mindset of Radharani started increasing more and more and more. And she started getting angry on Krishna. And uh, eventually, one of the Sakis of Krishna, of Radharani, she started trying to travel around and find where Krishna is. And um, as she went around trying to find Krishna, she came across another Sakhi, another gopi, whose name was Shaibya. She was one of the Sakis of Chandravali. Chandravali is a, is a rightist, he is a competitor to Radharani. You know? And this Sakhi told uh, the Sakhi of Radharani that Krishna is with Chandravali. And Radharani got really furious, really very upset. And um, Lalita, it is explained, among Radharani's friends, there are two closest friends, Lalita and Vishaka. So Lalita is considered to be a very dominant type of personality. She is almost like, a, um, like the boss of Radha and Krishna's, you know, um, relationship. And Vishakha is a little softer type person, you know. So, v Lalita's mood is always angry, very, very disturbed, you know. So when she came to know that Krishna is with Chandravali and she's not with Radharani, Lalita got super upset. She said, unreliable person, unreliable person he is. And uh, Lalita Devi, she went to Radharani and complained to Radharani that um, Krishna is in Chandravali's kunj. And Radharani's leftist mood went to the topmost degree and it reached the stage which is known as Abhiman. And therefore Radharani at this point is known as Abhimani Saki. So in Vrindavan, only Radharani has the right to say Krishna is mine. So when there's nobody else in this in, in the entire Vrindavan who can say Krishna Amar. Everybody else says something else. 
But rather than he says Krishna Amar, Krishna is mind, Krishna is mind. It is explained that even Chandravali, who is considered to be the competitor of Radharani, she can't say Krishna Amar. The only thing she can say is Ami Tumar. That means I am Krishna's, I belong to Krishna. Only Radha can say Krishna belongs to me. So that is the difference between rightist and leftist, left wing, you know. So leftist person can say Krishna is mine, and that to the topmost of the leftist, you know. And rightist can say I am Krishna's. So here, Radharani, she was so upset with Krishna, she told Lalita and Vishaka, if Krishna comes, don't allow that ungrateful person to enter. And she said, he is an ungrateful person, so he cannot enter my kunj. So now, um, this, what she is experiencing is known as mana. This is a, type, this is a different type of viraha. It's called mana viraha. So she's experiencing intense level of man viraha. And the most amazing part of this whole thing is that Radha is saying she is rejecting Krishna externally, but internally she wants Krishna. So because externally she is rejecting Krishna and internally she wants Krishna, Krishna who is within her heart, he is laughing, enjoying this experience, you know, of what Radha is going through. So now um, because Radha has given this instruction that Krishna is not allowed in this kunj, Lalita and Vishaka take this instruction very seriously. So whatever Radha says, for them, it is the highest thing. There is no question of any other uh, thing happening. And of course, between Lalita and Vishaka, Lalita is more stern on it and Vishaka is a little compassionate. You know? So both of them standing in the entrance of the kunj as guards. And then after some time, Krishna comes running. And he is panting. He is like very exhausted. He has come running because he knows he is late. And he knows he is very late. And more than that, he knows he is feeling a little guilty also. That he is late for a different reason, you know. So he comes running and he is sweating, he is panting. He is like a little uh, feeling guilty. And he comes and stands in front of the kunj. Lalita Devi looks at him and tells him, Unreliable person, you can't come in. And Krishna is saying, please excuse me, I am a great offender, please tell your Sakhi that I have come. So Lalita and Vishaka are just not ready to allow him. So when, when Lalita, Lalita is stern, Vishaka is a little, little soft. She goes inside to tell Radharani that Krishna has come. Lalita is not even going inside to tell Radharani Krishna has come. He is standing there only and she doesn't want Krishna to enter at all. So Radharani, so when, Lita, when Vishaka goes in, she sees Radharani in a mood that she has never ever seen Radha in. She is crying profusely in separation from Krishna. And the tears of Radharani are collecting as a puddle, small puddle on the ground. And the mud of the ground is wet by the tears. And Radha is writing something with her fingers on that wet mud basically. So she is obviously writing the name of Krishna there. So, um, Radharani, she is saying, has my Pranavallabha come? Has Krishna come? So she is speaking like that. And then she says, why should Krishna come to me? There are so many beautiful girls that are waiting to give him pleasure. And she says, uh, let him accept the worship of everybody else and be happy. And she says, let me be burned to ashes and let him be happy. So Radharani has become like a mad woman over here, you know. And uh, she's, she's, she's telling Vishaka, Vishaka, I must be a great offender. And I must have offended Krishna in some way because of which Krishna is refusing to come. And therefore, she's, she's like in this sulking mood. And then Vishaka realizes that this is not the time to bring Krishna in because Radharani is not in the mood to meet Krishna at all. So she comes out. And in the meanwhile, Lalita is firing Krishna left, right, center, you know. She is giving him all kinds of bad words. She is shouting at him for being a cheater and being, uh, you know, uh, not fulfilling his promises and all that. And then Lalita, in the end, she says, because you have become so... So she asks him, why are you here? Are you greedy for her love? Or do you think she is greedy for your love? And she, she says, you think that you are Madan Mohan, but you don't know that she is Madan Mohan Mohini. So like that, Lalita Devi is glorifying Radha and she's chastising Krishna. 
and she tells him because you have made radha cry so much there will be a day when you will cry unceasingly so like this krishna realizes that there is nothing that can be done anymore so he walks away from there very disappointed and he is constantly chanting the name of radha he says radha pura maduripo so he continuously says radha pura maduripo radha pura maduripo which means that o oh, radha please fulfill this desire of mine uh, who so she he is calling himself he is saying maduripo means i am the enemy of the madhu demon he says please fulfill the desire of mine o oh, radha please fulfill this desire of mine to see you so like this krishna comes out and he goes and sits on the banks of yamuna crying in great uh, separation from radha at that time purnamasi comes over there so purnamasi is is like the um, you know she is like the architect of a lot of things in vrindavan you know so she enhances mellows shushi comes there and she sees krishna very disturbed in a very very sad mood so she calls vrinda uh, vrinda devi and she tells vrinda devi do something to bring the bring radha and krishna together vrinda devi comes she inspects the whole situation she immediately understands krishna's blunder she immediately understands radha and his mood and she tells him you have made a big mistake and therefore you cannot go to meet radha in this form if you go to meet radha in this form as sham sundar with three pole bending form with a flute in your hand with beautiful locks of hair and with a blackish complexion she will never see you you have to change your form and you have to shave off your head you have to give up your jewelry you have to give up your beautiful golden uh, dhoti and instead wear the dress of a sanyasi take a danda in your hand and a begging pot in your hand shave your head change your black complexion she doesn't want to see anything black at all near her in fact radha is so much against the black color she says i don't even want to see wasp that are black in color i don't want to see crows and cuckoos that are black in color she says i don't even want to see my hair that is black in color she decides to put chandan on her hair to make her hair you know uh, white and she is so much hateful of the black color and therefore now krishna realizes that he has no option but to change his color now so he as vrinda devi is telling him to this this particular form you know she is describing in a instant krishna takes that form of lord chaitanya the golden sanyasi avatar dress of a sanyasi with a tridana in his hand and he is having a begging ball in his hand and he goes to the and then vrinda devi tells him i'll teach you a song she teaches krishna a beautiful song which will touch the heart of radharani and she also teaches him how to sing the song she in fact gives him a tambura also to play you know while singing the song so this song is a very beautiful song which ends with the verse which says aji radha preme bikshuk magi kanu phere dware dware haye which means that searching for the prem of radha kanu which is krishna has become a beggar and he is roaming around door to door begging for radha prem so with this mood uh, krishna goes to vrindavan goes to this particular kunj of radharani and he is begging obviously he is in a golden form he is obviously in a sanyas clothes he is obviously having a begging ball in his hand and he is singing such a beautiful song lalita and vishaka they love this song they ask him what is this what song is this who has taught you this song and he says i have a guru whose name is gandharvika she has taught me this song and lalita she is very impressed with the sanyasi she tells him oh sanyasi my friend is in a very bad state she is very very sad and she only wants to know when will she ever see her lover again can you also do astrological readings you know she asks him and immediately krishna says yes yes i know astrology my guru gandharvika has taught me how to read astrology you know so she says please come and meet my friend and relieve her by making a forecast so like this lalita devi she goes inside and uh, she talks to radharani first so when um, lalita devi is uh, you know thinking like this and she first goes inside and asks um, um you know radharani lalita and vishaka 
so radharani she is in a very very sad mood and then they take krishna inside and krishna starts singing this song aji radha prem um so and then as uh, bikshu kumagi so he is as Ra- krishna is singing the song very beautifully radharani's heart melts and the radharani she uh, when she hears the last sentence of this song that krishna has become a beggar begging for radha's love she immediately comes from her heart from the deepest core of her heart a verse comes out and what is the verse that comes out from the deepest core of radharani's heart at that moment when she hears krishna sing that particular song the verse that comes out from her heart is ashlishava padaratam pinastumam adarshanam marmahatam karotu va yatha tatha va vidada tulampato mat prana natastu sa eva na prah this verse of the shishtashtakam comes out from the heart of radha at the deepest point of viraha where she is telling that let krishna do whatever he wants let him embrace me or let him reject me let him do whatever he wants he will always remain my master forever so that verse of shishtashtakam that chetan mahaprabhu you know sings in in shishtashtakam this is the last verse of shishtashtakam it is actually a verse that radharani spoke in the highest level of viraha basically and then radha she is uh, sitting there and vishaka is telling radharani that here is a beautiful sanyasi who is very scholarly he has learned everything and he knows astrology he wants to predict your future please show him your hand so radharani is showing her hand to krishna and radharani has a veil that is covering her face no one no male can see radha except krishna and she doesn't allow any male to touch her except krishna and here at this point when radha is sitting on the veil in front of her and holding her hand out like this krishna is saying no 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 i can't see your hand because as a sanyasi i am not supposed to touch a woman's hand but i can read her forehead if i see her face i'll be able to read and give give predictions and they say no no how is it possible she can never see anyone except krishna sanyasi he says i am a sanyasi what is the problem don't worry i have renounced everything in this world please ask your sakhi to reveal her face and the radharani by the insistence of vishaka and lalita she reveals her face and as soon as radharani reveals her face the veil comes out immediately the sanyasi that is sitting there manifests tribhanga form because in front of radha krishna can never hide himself his original form manifests as it is and instantly when radha sees krishna in this tribhanga form she obviously she is her man goes goes away the viraha all that goes away and she immediately feels happy but at that point in time lalita who is sorry vishaka and lalita who are standing over there they get the biggest shock of their lives when they see krishna standing over there and is explained that surup damodar sorry ramananda rai much later when lord chaitanya appears uh, in kur and he gives darshan to ramananda rai this particular form if you remember the past time of ramananda rai is when lord chaitanya is coming in front of ramananda rai and he gives him darshan of krishna right gives him darshan of krishna and the moment ramananda rai sees darshan of krishna he faints why does he faint because ramananda rai is vishaka in his previous life and in this particular form so ramananda rai remembers that past time of of uh, you know krishna as a uh, sanyasi it is explained antar krishna bahir gaura externally he is a golden doll but internally he is krishna only and when that golden doll comes in front of radha the golden doll goes the form of the golden form of gaura goes away and the beautiful form of krishna manifests in front of radharani and that is how radha and krishna unite together again it is explained that this particular past time of why vishaka that means swarup damodar goswami fainted at that point in time it is considered to be the highest secret of gaur leela if anybody wants to understand that secret of gaur leela why vishaka fainted why ramananda rai fainted i would highly recommend you all to read this book you know the embankment of embankment of separation from gaur gobind maharaj 
maybe some other time i will continue on this and explain about the secret of why ramanand rai fainted this is head spinning and this is heart warming uh, i personally feel that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's past times are so deep and so esoteric you want to understand the past times you need someone who is so exalted to who has actually released these past times to understand so this particular past time of the lord and the way in which krishna manifests as lord chaitanya is i think one of the most amazing and sweetest ways of you know uh, the understanding gaur tatva and understanding lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's mood and incarnation so that greed of lord krishna gets fulfilled when he comes as lord chaitanya and how look at this only when krishna actually experience what radha is going through you know the only then he can understand a little bit of what radha is experiencing you know and that is the extent to which the the pastime of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is such a deep and more than the most confidential pastimes so we are so fortunate by the grace of shila prabhupad that we are getting to experience such high levels of spiritual consciousness uh, and experience the pastimes of the lord in such a beautiful way so let us all um, in this weekend and also the gorpani mother is coming on monday uh, immerse ourselves in uh, in this particular pastime of the lord remember it relish it share it with all of all our friends so that we can all immerse in gor lila in the most beautiful consciousness thank you very much hare krishna grantra shrimad bhagavatam ki chaitanya mahaprabhu ki shila prabhupad ki सूरत सब कर दिया